internet. So right now as you're watching this video, I am probably somewhere backstage trying to not completely lose my mind because when you're performing in a show that you're also directing, like shit gets crazy. But as is customary on my channel, as well as on my blog, Theater Commandments, when I am in Hell Week, I make an episode of Tales of Hell Week. So without any further ado, you guys know the drill by now, Lego. During Hell Week, the director decided he wanted a second follow spot suddenly. Was one hired? No. One profile with some shackles hanging off the back as a counterweight and several gel frames to swap in and out later. We have a second follow spot. Quick side note, I actually really love theatrical solutions like that. I think they are either really genius or really funny. So yeah, I realize that that might have been like stressful for you, but I find it pretty funny. It was our final dress for Urinetown. I had a quick change from privilege to pee to Mr. Cladwell. I had to exit stage left and enter stage right. The song ends and I'm running from stage left to stage right for my change. I didn't know that five other people were running to stage left. I slam into one. I bounce backwards and fall, slamming my head into a metal fuse box. He goes up to help me, so I push him out of the way, start running, saying, I am not missing this change. I made the change and was covered in bruises the next day. Okay, so I worked crew on a production of Urine Town the summer before last, and let me just say, that show needs to pipe the fuck down with the quick changes, because there are like just an inordinate number of quick changes, and everybody who's in the ensemble has a million quick changes, and they happen like every other scene. So like every other scene, there is just absolute pandemonium in the wings of people like stripping and throwing things on. So during a production of Little Shop, I was the stage manager and responsible for creating all the fake organs and body parts we feed to Audrey too, because I'm low key into special effects. Before final dress, I run a gooey heart to our director for approval and he decides he wants to prank the cast. He chases me through the theater, had the heart in his sleeve, gaining the attention of the whole cast and crew. He corners me and proceeds to rip my heart out. The cast was so scared we couldn't finish a run. It's currently tech week, I'm stage managing. We open on Thursday and we had a long weekend over which we've had no rehearsal, mainly because the director and all five kids in tech, including me, worked 12 hour days to try and build the set that we didn't get the shipment of wood for until last week because it's all pre-cut, just assembly. Except it wasn't. So we still haven't finished. At the same time, three actors aren't memorized. Did I mention the 160,000 balls in the not finished ball pit? Okay. I have questions. Where does one get 160,000 balls and why do you need a ball pit for the show? During a dress rehearsal, a ceiling prop for a dance club scene fell on stage during an office scene and nearly crushed the lead. However, instead of breaking character, he looked at the receptionist and said, what kind of an establishment are you running here? On opening night of our show, my friend forgot the show order and went back to the dressing room and started changing between numbers. When she heard the first notes of the number that was currently on stage, she said, oh, shit, I'm supposed to be on. What was on was her headset. So her revelation was heard throughout the whole theater. Then the mic tech backstage forced her to go on halfway through the number in the wrong costume. It quickly became a cast meme. Show opens in three days for a single performance. Director realizes they have no lighting director. Director calls me, I take the job. Show is three hours and 215 cues long. No stage manager. Half of the spots didn't work. I almost went to the Bible for help and I'm an atheist. The day before opening night, we were gifted new smoke machines. Big professional smoke machines as opposed to the dinky little things that barely produced a vague mist that we had before. We had never had big professional smoke machines before, so during rehearsal we get the queue up to drop fog, so we load up the powdered dry ice that we used to use and drop it into the boiling water. There was so much fog. At first we didn't think it was going badly, we had a nice layer of fog, but then we noticed that the fog wasn't stopping, it just kept rising on stage. And then it started filling up backstage too. There was five feet deep pea soup fog backstage for two hours. A few years ago when I was in a production of Les Mis, we had a fog machine for one of the scenes in the show, and we were doing a concert version, so everybody was on stage at all times. I was just kind of sitting on the sidelines in my seat uh, during the scene. It was the scene where Thenardier is uh, in the sewers after the barricade, where he's like robbing the corpses in the sewers. So he's singing this song, and every night we just have like a, a faint mist of, of fog come out. I also should mention that we were performing this in a very, very, very small venue with a low stage like it was maybe two feet off the ground. It was a really low stage. And one night the fog machine kind of malfunctioned in every way possible. And that it not only was spreading fog for way too long, it was also letting out way too much fog. Cause normally when we'd use it, we'd use it like really minimally just to create like a tiny haze on the stage. But this thing, like it just released the Kraken of fog. And it's also important to note that the fog, like even though we only used a little bit of it, it smelled faintly of maple syrup. and so 
so when this thing just goes berserk and lets out all the fog that it has to offer, the entire theater now smells like maple syrup. It legit smelled like someone had just like lit the entire country of Canada on fire in this show. So in my high school's performance of The Wizard of Oz last year, we had a stuffed dog for Toto. So on Tuesday of Hell Week, they were doing a scene with just the lion, Tin Man, and Scarecrow. So me and Dorothy are sitting next to the prop table, just out of sight, watching this scene, when we realized that Toto was supposed to be out there. Dorothy grabs Toto and chucks him onto the stage, and he hits the Tin Man right in the face. The Tin Man picks up Toto, looks over at us, and mouths, not yet, and chucks him back at us. Now, Dorothy's mom had brought her dinner, which was pancakes, yes, she was eating in costume, and she was eating them as this was all happening. Anyway, me and Dorothy both go to catch Toto at the same time, and somehow, he ended up in the pancakes, one half of him covered in maple syrup. We both sprinted to the dressing room, did some magic, and everything ended up fine. He wasn't sticky anymore, but he did smell like syrup still. And the best part? The director and stage manager never found out until the cast party. And that concludes the stories. Comment, like, and subscribe. Share some of your Hell Week stories, and I will see y'all next Friday.